Here's my new lawnmower. I had an earlier model of this make from 2008. It never worked very well, but I was convinced that their latest models would be much, much better. So here it is. Just delivered today, three weeks early. To get on, as you can see, it's pretty simple. And you start off with the handles apart like this. And when you pull them together, when the engine's working and you push them forward, the machine goes forward. And if you push them apart at different speeds, then the machine will turn right or left. And then when you pull them back, the machine goes backwards. And if you push one forward and the other one backwards, it turns on a sixpence or a dime or whatever it is appropriate to your country. Right, so that's those. And those, by the way, are adjustable for your length, as is the seat, which goes backwards and forwards. The platter goes up and down. And to do that, you have to push hard on the pedal and then you can turn it down to one inch or 25 millimeters as you can see cutting close to the ground push it in push it up and that's four and a half inches to start Now a few details from the back. We've got really big tires and here's the Kawasaki engine with the air filter inside which is really substantial and on the bottom you've got the possibility of attaching a tow bar and at the sides here you've got the little levers which you can pull forward and if you run out of fuel or something like that and you have to push it or tow it then those disengage the hydraulic motors and allow you to move it uh, independently which is a very important detail. Here is your oil dipstick which you have to keep obviously filled between the top and the bottom or full and empty. And that's really about it that you need to know in terms of the way the machine functions. Now one of the things when I have machines is I maintain them myself. In the old machine the oil change was a real pain in that you couldn't get at the thing properly. The uh, outlet and in any case it spilt oil all over the whole chassis every time you try to fill it up. This one is so much better so if I zoom in you can see where the oil change entrance is, exit rather, there it is. All you've got to do is undo it with a spanner and all the oil comes out. That is a wonderful improvement. The cutting deck is welded, it's not stamped, so therefore it's made of much heavier gauge steel than its little brother. This is the L127 or the L50 if you're in a country that uses inches. One of the other things is it's fairly easy to keep the platter clean because you can attach the hose pipe when you finish cutting the grass and let it run and Bob's your uncle, it throws out all the grass. There is the entrance point. And also you can see how easy it is to undo the platter because you've got a, 
a very simple split pin type thing and under the seat this is where they have hidden the battery and the fuel tank and you can see also the control panel on the far side which tells you how many hours you've done if I zoom in that little LED display there is where you have all the hours which has been done and it has to the oil has to be changed after five to ten hours to start with and then I would change it every 50 hours regardless of what the instructions say and the little knob on the left hand side is for engaging the the cutters when you're sitting on top of the machine Oh dear. What it looks like when it's all finished. Doesn't it look different? And that's looking down. That took all the whole lot about one hour and then as it coming into view over the solar panels you can see in the distance the pile of grass which was collected it's pretty enormous and there's the sweeper that I used to collect it all up and then after I'd collected it all up then I put it in a trailer to take away to the compost heap. The trailer is a very old one 